When is the Holy Spirit received? At salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit in your spirit. At baptism, you release him into the soul and body. John chapter 7 verse 38 says this, out of your belly or out of your innermost being, that's what Jesus said, your innermost being, not out of your soul, not out of your body, he said out of your innermost being, your spirit, will flow rivers of living water. And the scripture tells us very clearly that when Jesus talked about the rivers of living water, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is when that river within me floods everything around me. Baptism takes place when I'm submerged. You see, the same thing is true of a ship, a boat. A boat stays afloat because it's in the water, but the water is not in it. The moment the water gets inside the boat, the boat becomes baptized. Some of you have the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer, Romans 8, 9 tells us that if they don't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to God. Many of us in this room have the Holy Spirit. The question is, does the Holy Spirit have you? I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't be when you're full of yourself. We need to empty ourselves and allow that water, that river of living water, to flow from deep within. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is not rain from heaven. It's a flood from within. When that water begins to overflow from my spirit, it fills the soul. When that water fills the soul, my mind is transformed. My emotions are lifted. My heart is changed. My mindsets begin to adapt to the word of God. My personality even begins to become transformed because the soul is being overcome by the floodwaters of the spirit. Now something very amazing happens. In Romans chapter eight, verse 26, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit pleads for us, pleads for us. I love that phrase, pleads for us with groanings that cannot be uttered and he prays for us according to God's will when we don't know what to pray. That verse in Romans 8, 26 is not talking about the gift of tongues, but follow this. A lot of preachers use that and they say, this is the gift of tongues. It's not, it's not, it's not. Romans 8, 26 is not the gift of speaking in tongues. It's the source of the gift of speaking in tongues. Think about the fact that people will travel all over the world to have a man or a woman of God lay hands on them. Think about the fact that we, we have people who pray for us, who love us. He pleads for us. That means he fervently prays. If you could see the Holy Spirit praying for you, you would see him face down on the floor, tears streaming down his face. His voice would shake the room. I dare say he would be pounding his fist to the floor, pleading for you as he prays. With groanings, that means a deep, urgent groan. Something that comes from deep within his heart. If you've ever heard a mother pray for her child, if you've ever heard a father pray for his child, if you've ever heard a grandparent pray for their child, you have a little taste of what it's like when the Holy Spirit prays for you. He prays and he pleads fervently for you. The one who knows you like no one else can know you, prays for you like no one else can pray for you. And he prays what? According to God's will, meaning he, he bends you toward God's will. He inclines you towards God's will. He, he works on your character and nature and like the potter shapes the clay, so the Holy Spirit's prayers shape you. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.